Okay, so this is our brand new fourth grade earth sciences unit. <clears throat> the phenomena is all about the Grand Canyon and changes to the Grand Canyon, as well as other sorts of landforms. But uh, specifically, students do a lot of investigation and research about what canyons are, how they form, how they change. <clears throat> so here's just a rough agenda. We'll go over the Escalar specifics that you're already pretty familiar with. We'll break down um, the entire lesson content, the main ideas, and then we'll go lesson by lesson and unpack the science and engineering practices that are focused on in each individual lesson. And then we'll have, you know, opportunities at the end for questions. But of course, if you have any questions or comments at any time, just go ahead and shout them out. I'm here to help. <laughs> Um, so the Escalar specifics you're already very familiar with. You know how to log in and access the unit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take you, though, to the website. Um, there's just something that I think that you should be aware of. You're the first person to um, gain access to this unit. I know you might wait um, for other uh, school teachers to go ahead and use it. But just for the time being, I wanted to just make aware this. Um, it's actually a bug in the website. That I, I think we probably will just end up starting because we do only have three weeks left and not knowing if anybody else is going to start it or not before the end of the year, it's probably best if we start it, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, unless you find out that somebody is going to start it within the next couple of weeks. Um, okay. Yeah, I've... um. I've been trying to get responses from these school teachers and I will keep you updated as I figure out more on that front there. It's a time of year for them, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then, you know, of course, if you wanna come back next year, we have a lot of like really awesome fifth grade units coming out. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, we're happy to continue um, as long as you need us to give feedback on things, so. Awesome, thanks. Um, so on the website, I will send you a link, you know, you get all of the links in the teacher guides and in the storylines of how to access things on the website. But I just wanted to show you if you're using this yellow drop down menu and you're kind of starting from scratch by selecting Earth and Space Sciences. Okay. You can click this drop down and then of course you want to hit the Grand Canyon. <clears throat> but the bug is here when you're selecting only the second option from this drop down, it's going to pull up uh, the stars in the solar system, which is not the same unit. Um, this is something that we've made uh, aware to our um, our developers, and they're um, <clears throat> they kind of have to go through the back and do a lot of rearranging in order to fix this. So we hope it'll be fixed within a couple weeks. But just in the meantime, if you click on the Grand Canyon and then stars in the solar system opens up. You're, you haven't gone crazy. You're not missing anything. It's just, um, you'll just have to go again on the drop down menu. And then the next time you click it, it'll open up. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. We're working with the developers on doing that. Um, just sort of those like structural things with navigating the, the website can like take a couple weeks to resolve. But and um, that would have thrown me off. <laughs> so I'm glad yeah. you did that. <laughs> yeah, at first I was like, am I going crazy? I swear I kicked, clicked on the Grand Canyon. But um, that's the only time it does it. If you already have like the lessons open, it's no problem. You're not going to get like kicked out of kicked out of the unit or something. Um, so here's the welcome page before lesson one. Just a quick little introduction, giving students just um, an idea about, um, you know, a rough a uh, rough kind of timeline of kind of Earth's history. You know, we're talking like billions of years. Uh, we're kind of opening their minds to these huge time frames. Is uh, there a uh, pretest again before this point? Yes. Yeah. So here at I the very bottom. Well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. this is read this page and then do the pretests. This comes first. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So this is technically not really part of lesson one, but you would just do it right before lesson one. So just a little bit of introduction saying like you're going to explore like changes to planet Earth. Earth is uh, changing over long periods of time and also they'll find out over short periods of time. And then this link here opens up the pretest, uh, just like usual. Um, there's not that many questions. Let's see, this is like, uh, like 12 or 13 questions about um, a changing landform on earth just in a totally different you know it's not related to the grand canyon it's a separate context um <clears throat> so same stuff with the pretest okay 
And let's see, we've got four lessons, which we'll go over together. And then, you know, just after the pretest, it's all, all open for you to go ahead and explore. But I'll go ahead and jump back to the presentation. <clears throat> Um, so because you've already done a unit with us, we've already gotten the consent form from you and from your child. So no need to worry about that there. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also done the training workshop survey from the last unit that you did. So also good to go there. Uh, the pretest and post-test data is yeah. the same as usual. Um, we do, you know, yeah. we really use this data a lot. It's extremely important uh, to our research program. So yeah, just the pretest before lesson one, and then there is a link to the post test at the very end of lesson four, um, just same as usual. Okay, and then that's just that's more for your information because my daughter is literally still asking how she did on those, and I'm like, they just said you did well. Like I can't tell you more than that, but okay. she more of a breakdown of like, did I get them? Like you know, like she wants to know, did she get them right? <laughs> Not sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I have access to her answers. Um, I, I got I'll, the answers sent at one point, but that mm -hmm. was it. I'm like, I can look at your answers, but I already know what your answers are. Cause you know, she started out typing her own, but then she was dictating and I was typing for her. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, we both already knew what her answers were. It was more, mm -hmm. I don't know. She's looking for like a, a score, like she'd typically be used to kind of. Yeah, for sure. I understand. Um, yeah, I have, so I have access to her answers that are scored according to oh, her. Okay. And I will make a note. Um, I'll make a note to go ahead and share that with you. I think that, yeah, I think. Okay. That's, just, that's, that's just, I, she stresses out for no reason. Like she knows she knew it, but just having a number will relax her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Be like, okay, now I know. And and good okay yeah I understand I yeah a lot of those kind of dynamics around like high performing students they want to know that they're like they're you know hitting the mark right uh, <laughs> yeah so I do have access to her scored responses um I can even send you the rubric I believe I'll have to ask Fatima if I'm allowed to send the actual rubric itself but um yeah right. I'll know. really just a number is all she wants <laughs> okay okay so um, <clears throat> so the pre and post test data. Um, and then the after the unit, uh, we always ask like teachers and students or parents and their child to do just a satisfaction survey, um, which uh, <clears throat> isn't necessarily part of our data analysis for the program. It's more just for us as content developers and curriculum designers to just know what your experience was like. But you've always been really great with, um, you know, giving us feedback over email and stuff, which is always Really, I felt like the surveys didn't give me the opportunity to explain some answers where mm -hmm. some had to answer something that sounded maybe like a negative response. But mm -hmm. if I could have explained it, it was just something that didn't necessarily apply to us and uh, there was no other choice for the uh, appropriate answer. So okay. the surveys were, I don't know, were difficult on some of the questions. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, this is, this is really good feedback to hear. Do you think that... Um, this is because um, because of like your status as a homeschool uh, parent? I think so, where it was things that would ask like, was, did it include content for students who had difficulties with learning or, you know, for differentiating and it didn't apply to us and where I could see that, yeah, it probably did, but I didn't have the opportunity to work with a student in that group but I couldn't explain that it didn't apply it was just either was it good or wasn't it and um yeah I was just hoping that whoever was going through those would know okay well this didn't apply and you know it's not that it was a bad thing or a good thing it was just it didn't apply to our situation okay thank you yeah this is really good to know too um yeah I can talk to Fatima about that because you know we want all of our materials to be applicable to you know any sort of like educational environment um, well, that I was just worried that you guys would get the wrong impression from my answer, my survey answers. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll take a second look at it in, um, you know, just like knowing this. And this is something that we can probably change for next year's study. Just, um, you know. Yeah, just having a comment field. Then I could have just said, you know, this doesn't apply or here's why I answered this. Um, okay. Would have been good to <clears throat> give you guys that information. Okay. 
I feel like maybe it would even make sense for every question to have to have, have a comment, a comment field. Comment yeah. Like that. Okay. Cool. Um, thanks for the feedback. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, just uh, working down the list. Um, you know, the last thing is the student background data spreadsheet, which we've already secured from you. So we're good to go there. Um, the materials and supports, you're also going to be really familiar with this for teachers and parents. We have the storyline. Uh, we also have the teacher's guide that break down every single engagement of every single lesson. And you'll be able to find that too in the usual Google Drive folder. Um, okay. Here we've got our fourth grade Earth Systems unit. Ooh, it's empty right now. <laughs> so I'll put everything, <laughs> I'll put everything in there. Um, the teacher guides. Uh, we've actually, since you have done, since you did the uh, home run unit, we've actually made some edits to our teacher guides, uh, including a differentiation and modification section to every single engagement, which, um, okay. you know, that can include like scaffolding for students, uh, you know, who are struggling with the content um, or, you know, English language learners, which I know like really probably doesn't apply for your situation, but it also includes uh, modification for like advanced students uh, who are really like grasping the curriculum and you know kind of want more stuff to go off of so I think that'll be a cool opportunity for your daughter I have my ELL certification too which so it's always interesting just to look through those things and see you know if I was in the classroom what kind of things would be there so cool yeah that is that is really cool insight that's something I'm always like always uh interested in learning more about um my master's is in like uh, education for instructional design, but we work with some education professionals who have, you know, decades of classroom experience and like ELL yeah. experience. So a lot of ideas there we kind of like collaborate on. And I think that's always, yeah. always really cool to consider and kind of, you know, modify things. Yeah. It's so, a thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, So this is accessible through the website, if I remember right. There's a link to get to these files from the where the teacher guides are. Um, this will be. This isn't uh, really linked to our website at all. This will just be a separate link that I'll send you over email, okay. mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to get all of the teacher guides, uh, the storyline, as well as uh, like the printable sheets. You know, if uh, your daughter didn't want to, I remember you guys kind of had some trouble using the like yeah, digital. She screen. wanted to, and I, well, we're going to try it online. I know that's better data for you guys. We'll try it and hopefully all goes well with that because she really okay. prefers it on online. So, okay. Yeah, that's cool. And we appreciate that, you know, every time you guys were like running into roadblocks, you would just like let us know and we could talk to our developers about it. And we were also able to like, um, add sections in our teacher guides uh, to kind of like, kind of give like these pointers and some of the troubleshooting that we were like talking about with you, um, okay. just to try to make sure that other teachers and parents weren't gonna hit the same things. Yeah. Um, um, as usual for the students, the website, she's gotta be logged in. Well, you can use the links that we send you because Still, we're in the pilot study phase of this program, so stuff isn't publicly available. Just using the drop-down menus like we talked about before. Uh, for our reading supports, we have the note-taking system, which I'm interested in if your daughter was like using the like uh, the voice or written notes at all. She tried the voice notes a couple times, and it was a learning curve figuring out how to get it to record or to re-record, like okay. so that she... If she wanted to re-record, it was, I, if I remember correctly, sometimes it would record a second section of the recording, but sometimes it would record over the recording. So trying to get it to do the one that we wanted, we did eventually figure it out, but I think we'll have to go back and figure that out again. But she preferred just typing her answers in, I think, but mm -hmm. we'll probably do a mix again this time and, and see what she likes. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah, same deal with this unit, you know, hovering over a given sentence will open up the options to do either one of those. Okay. Um, and the student sheets, uh, which we were just talking about, uh, you know, the website will open up links to all of those that are interactive and you can save and download them. 
uh, or you're always, I mean, so many teachers really just uh, prefer to use the paper ones. So um, if you do ever wind up using the paper ones, something that's not required, but we appreciate from people is maybe just uh, getting photos of any original student products. Okay. Um, which again, isn't really necessarily part of our data analysis for the program, but it really just kind of helps us get an idea of how our, how our curriculum is implemented, you know. I still need to scan in her stuff from the last unit and send you all her doodles of models and things. Um, oh, cool. The models are really fun. The models is something that I've really enjoyed looking at from the last unit. A few teachers have sent, uh, sent pictures of that. And that's something that we include like, um, in teacher guides too, like when fourth grade teachers and parents next year will launch the unit, we'll be able to maybe show them some of our student work to kind of to kind of give them like a an idea of what that looks like. My kids are very arty, so they enjoyed being able to have that time to draw their ideas and make sketches and things. So we yeah. enjoyed. Awesome. I and mean, yeah, that's, that's, you know, just super important to science is just being able to express your ideas in more ways than one or however you think that you can communicate them clearly. And um, that's something if your daughter like really enjoys, that's something that you could uh, apply to really most engagements. If she's giving like a written answer, you can say like, oh, say, okay, like also maybe you just, this is a good opportunity to practice drawing a model of what you mean or Maybe even well, like a she lot. definitely does too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we draw everything here, and it was funny when she was doing her final project for that um, the home run unit. She'd be like, "Well, there's like this scratchy, grippy stuff here," and and, and drew the picture and pointed, and we're like, "Oh yeah, you know that's called whatever." So she could like get her ideas and explain it to get like a better word to say it, but through drawing it, which I thought was neat. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, just another, you know, kind of great example of modifying to, you know, help your students express themselves and in, in whatever way they're comfortable with. Yeah. All right, so moving on from here, again, this is the stuff that you're already familiar with. Um, so the content of this lesson is centered around the phenomenon that uh, the Grand Canyon changes and not just the Grand Canyon, you know, this is just one example of uh, like a beautiful landform, uh, but students throughout the unit have opportunities to explore other types of landforms, uh, also other canyons elsewhere in the world. There's some really cool Google Earth exploring and researching uh, that I'll show you in, in the first, uh, first bit of the unit. Uh, and then the big ideas that we're kind of centering all of the investigations around is uh, patterns found in rock formations, what we can learn from the rock formations, whether it's the type of rock or the fossils within the rock, uh, the color that the rocks are or the shapes, why are they shaped like this, uh, kind of is uh, something that scientists use very heavily to to make conclusions and make explanations about what has changed here and how has it changed over these huge timescales that we couldn't possibly observe ourselves. So how can we take these patterns and really learn from them? So a lot of patterns in this, in this unit. Okay. And then, uh, like I mentioned fossils. So students are gonna get to learn a lot about fossils. Um, the including just, you know, like defining the word, but also exploring real pictures of fossils, uh, learning about like the layers, uh, what we can learn from fossils. Like for example, in the Grand Canyon, we find patterns where this rock layer has plants and animals, but the rock layer or, you know, like, uh, like mammals and ferns, for example, but the rock layers underneath show like sponges and coral and fish you know, these different changes that indicate, uh, uh, changes in the patterns that indicate changes to the rock and earth over over these long periods of time. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one for us. <laughs> we <laughs> just spent quite a bit of time at the Academy of Natural Sciences talking to the team there, watching them like with bones and got contact information. She's determined to go on a dig now in Colorado and like this whole, this is gonna be perfect. So. Whoa. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. I love to hear that. I'm excited for you. Yeah, the, the and the team there was, I mean, we went in the middle of the day during the week, and they were happy to just sit and chat with us for as long as we wanted to hear about anything. It was very cool. So, yeah. Oh, that sounds, that sounds awesome. 
Well, cool. I'm excited that she'll be excited about this unit. I'm really looking forward to how she gets on with it. Yeah, because this this will get her interest much more than baseball. <laughs> Although that was well done. And for kids who are sporty, that but this one will get her attention more. <laughs> cool. Um so yeah, just a lot of a lot of those types of deals, you know, analyzing like what what uh you know paleontologists might do, you know, analyzing rocks, formations, uh fossils, and then learning about also just the natural processes that can cause these changes whether it's uh, like rainfall or water from like glaciers or mountains, uh, you know, how rivers uh, change the landforms. We learn about erosion and weathering and deposition. Uh, there's a really cool hands-on experiment where students get the chance to like make their own canyon okay. in, in uh, sand and dirt by like pouring water, adding water and stuff like that. That would be fun. And then uh, toward the end of the unit, things kind of, uh, the context kind of broadens to all sorts of natural hazards where they can learn about, because um, in the first part of the unit, they really learn about these ideas within the context of uh, slow changes over really long periods of time. And then at the end of the unit, they get to really wonder like, what happens when these things happen quickly with like an earth earthquake or a tsunami or volcanoes or storms? And then they get to learn about how these really fast acting hazards can um, can uh, change not only change the land, but how also we as humans interact with them and the things that we can do to mitigate the effects of the hazards because we can't stop an earthquake, but what we can do is take steps to protect ourselves when those things do happen. And that's something that they get to focus on in the engineering team, uh, the engineering project at the end of lesson four. Uh, Kind of learning about uh protecting ourselves from earthquakes and tsunamis so just an overview um you're familiar with the three dimensions of uh, science teaching that escalar uses there's the science and engineering practices which is what the students are engaging with uh firsthand most of the time um a uh, question or lesson one, we always uh, do asking questions, which is super important, you know, just from noticing a phenomenon and being able to dig in and sort of ask questions that will uncover different pieces of that phenomenon. Analyzing and interpreting data is a really, really fun one that has to do with fossils. Uh, she'll get to explore some cool interactive activities. She can take um, a lot of notes about the patterns that she finds in the colors of the rock, the ages of the rock, um, the uh, like kind of different geologic ages and periods that they're grouped in, and the things that are found in the fossils, what the rocks are made of. And then they'll get the chance to do models. Uh, you'll get the chance to do models at the end with the engineering project for mitigating the, the natural hazards. Um, the cross-cutting concepts, uh, these are just ideas that are applicable all throughout science, which like we talked about earlier, so many patterns, 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 patterns uh, can be used to sort and classify phenomena and just what can we learn from these patterns that we notice, which is so much. That's really like everything that we have here when we're talking about geology. And um, also talking about systems like Earth itself is a giant system, you know, we've got the water cycle, and we've got uh, tectonic activity systems like this. And the disciplinary core ideas, these are basically like the big ideas that we went over uh, just a minute ago, talking about uh, patterns and rock formations, uh, fossils, how water such as rainfall can shape the land, and how uh, ha natural hazards uh, can't necessarily be stopped, but the things that we can do to protect ourselves from natural hazards. And then also kind of tying into the developing and using models as testing solutions. Uh, we can have the opportunity to, to model and test like tsunami protection. Um, we learn about it like in the context of Japan specifically. There's some resources at the end that she can investigate and then, you know, can also even like go to Google and learn more about this and maybe other parts of the world that are affected by similar hazards. So getting into lesson one, which is always about introducing and setting the base uh, 
uh, anchoring phenomenon, which is the Grand Canyon, which at first she might not necessarily recognize herself. Um, I'm not sure if maybe you've ever visited before. We haven't, but she's familiar. Um, her great grandmother lived in Arizona right near there for quite a while. So she's definitely familiar with the types of formations in that area. And that's cool. Then she's got kind of a personal connection to the landform. Um, so uh, it starts about talking how Earth changes, even the Grand Canyon changes uh, in the first lesson. She gets uh, exposed to a little bit of uh, ideas about maybe wondering how exactly the canyon formed and the sort of time scales over which it was formed. Uh, looking closer at the rock formations, asking questions about why does it look like this? And specifically, maybe like, why uh, why do most canyons have a river at the bottom? Or what do the different colored layers in the rock mean? You know, uh, there's a really cool engagement where uh, she can go on Google Earth and zoom in really close to the canyons, zoom out, look at the surrounding landscape. Uh, this is, you know, starting to look for patterns in uh, what kind of... Uh, what kind of things usually are present in and around a canyon. There's also uh, an interactive to just kind of talk about other landforms too, just uh, kind of like a knowledge refresher about um, canyons, mm -hmm. valleys, you know, lakes, islands, volcanoes, uh, things that I'm sure your daughter is very familiar with at this point. She went through a phase of uh, obsession with caves so we did a lot of cave trips and things and I think she'll be able to apply a lot of that to this unit as well with the water and some things um yeah really cool I think she'll come in yeah I think she'll come into this unit with a lot of like really great initial ideas to kind of bounce around and then investigate and play with yeah she's a rock girl she likes the, she likes her rocks we just did the rock and mineral expo last weekend i think like she's a she's into rocks oh. so we'll get <laughs> this is awesome i'm really really excited for her to dive in here i think we'll have a lot of really great questions to ask in lesson one yeah <laughs> yeah awesome um, so again, just the science and engineering practice of making observations and then asking really like cool, scientific, um, productive, juicy questions about the things that she does see, which I think she'll have a lot of really great ideas about. Um, and then, you know, kind of choosing which questions are going to help explain changes to the Grand Canyon over time, and then uh, kind of setting up ideas about uh, what she can do to investigate these things. And of course, you know, her ideas might not necessarily match up with the things that we've provided in lesson two, but uh, we're probably nonetheless things that uh, you and her can work together to kind of supplement these things. Yeah, I think she'll have a lot of really great ideas about this. Yeah, I think this one's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, the notice and wonder sheet and asking questions table you're probably familiar with from lesson one, really just like good note taking, like we were talking about, and um, kind of just putting a name to that specific landform, uh, kind of defining like what makes a canyon a canyon, how is it different from a valley or something like that. Well, cool. um, any questions about lesson one? Nope, I think we're good. Cool. Lesson two, I'll move us to the side for a second so you can see. This is the sort of really cool hands-on experiment that she'll get the opportunity to do in lesson two uh, when she's investigating how exactly do canyons form. Uh, so in addition to, you know, all of the typical sort of scientific investigation things like talking about variables and hypotheses and following uh, following steps and collecting good data, you know, all of these things that kind of cut across any sort of scientific discipline that you're, uh, you're, that she might be investigating. She'll get to ask a lot of really cool questions about the processes that shape the soil, uh, what is exactly moving the soil, what happens to it when it stops moving. Uh, this is when she'll have the opportunity to earn words such as like weathering, erosion, and deposition, which she's probably, you know, familiar with these concepts already. <laughs> and will, you know, be able to put these words to these really important ideas that are really kind of explaining the phenomenon and putting these different pieces together. 
Um, and then also just using this data to, uh, you know, analyzing the data to come to a result about the investigation and then using that result, applying it to answer not only her testable investigation question, but also just the question of how do canyons form? And then you could even extrapolate this to how might this help other landforms uh, come, come to be as well. And just a couple of sheets that she'll complete here. Uh, the experiment lab sheet, you know, which is where she can talk about variables and collect uh, data, talk about results and conclusions, what she's learned uh, from this question that she chose to ask about the investigation. And then also throughout the entire lesson, she'll be returning to this make an argument with evidence sheet. So it's got two columns. Um, you know, she'll have an opportunity at the very beginning of the lesson to get her initial ideas out and make an initial claim that uh, you know might help answer her question, how do canyons form? What does she think uh, really happens when canyons are forming? And then she can start by listing evidence, things that she already knows about the topic, which might be a lot. And then throughout the lesson with the different, uh, different pieces of the lesson that she engages with, collecting things that she think you know, might also help fit into this puzzle. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, she'll be able to, you know, every time she returns to the sheet, she might have new notes, new evidence, but uh, something else that's really cool about science is, you know, you're always using these new findings to refine your ideas. So it's great to encourage her to maybe like change her, uh, you know, add or change, revise her argument a little bit. If she comes across a new word that really helps explain this, you know, putting that word in here, you know, boosting that kind of scientific vocabulary and really just refining the argument throughout the entire lesson. And then by the end of the lesson, she's got all of this evidence and logical reasoning to back up her argument. Okay. Sure. And that, that's something that she's always really open to with language arts type things, they're revising, but not something that we've really applied in science before. So that'll be a good opportunity, I think, to, to show that it can be used other than just in her writing for language arts type things. Yeah, exactly. And that thing is really, you know, really super important to science. Uh, you know, a lot of people kind of see those as separate pursuits, but really uh, you can have all this scientific knowledge, but if you don't have the means to express it and communicate it clearly in a way that makes sense and using logical reasoning to put these things together, then, you know, what can you really do with all this knowledge? So, yeah, that's really cool for students to learn. Um, it sounds like your daughter is really motivated and interested in science, um, but yeah, especially, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, um, you know, especially for students who might think that science is something that's just really like esoteric and you know, kind of unrelated to like people and how we communicate with each other. It's cool just learning about how these things really go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, so lesson three, uh, the main investigation that's happening here is just learning about these layers in the rock formation, because that's really like one of the most striking things about the Grand Canyon is you see these like vertical bands that go all throughout the canyon, you know, it's stretching for miles and miles, but you can see like these continuous lines and how they kind of, they kind of like interact with each other, um, so kind of learning exactly what the canyon layers mean, uh, what uh, contributes to their color and their order specifically. Uh, we get some really cool uh, interactive activities here to explore the layers. This is when she'll have the opportunity to do some really great note-taking and looking for patterns in the layers, uh, clicking on each layer, learning about the geologic age that the layer was formed in, what sort of things are found like fossils within the layer, uh, also, uh, like what types of stone are in the layers and all of these different things, she's going to come across a lot of which I'm sure she has before learning about rocks, you know, coming across like a lot of really specific scientific language, learning about like shale and sandstone and the like Mesozoic era, you know, all of these things are opportunities for her to, you know, maybe hit Google and learn a little bit more about them if she wants to kind of supplement, supplement things like that. And I know there's a lot 
of good places close by here where we can see the layers too. We have a good friend who's a watershed steward through the uh, Penn State Extension Project. And he does presentations, you know, locally showing and explaining the layers locally here. So hopefully we can set something up to go along with this, um, with that, to see it in real life, along with the things on Google. So oh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we worked out with this. That sounds super cool. Yeah. And it's also, you know, just always great for students to be able to see how these things apply in kind of their home territory. Right here, yeah. Yeah. That like really personal connection is really, really important. Uh, so uh, the, when she's exploring this, she'll have the opportunity to organize her observations and data in a big, great big table. And then uh, kind of looking for patterns in that data, you know, kind of collecting these ideas as evidence to answer her question by the end of the lesson. But then also she'll have the opportunity in another one of the interactives to kind of use this data and use these patterns that she's been able to notice to sort different fossils into the layers that she thinks that they came from. And she'll be able to like check her answers like that. Um, and then, you know, just by gathering all this data and finding these patterns, uh, you know, just the practice of using all of this information uh, in one cohesive idea to give an explanation about what do the different layers mean? Uh, what can we learn from the layers? What can we learn from the fossils? Mm -hmm. Again, here's that make an argument with evidence table. She'll have the opportunity to make a claim at the very beginning of the lesson and then return to it every time she maybe thinks of something else to kind of keep revising and keep using these logical reasoning uh, steps to make a really, really strong claim by the end of the lesson. Okay. Uh, so then at lesson four, you know, she's learned a lot about canyon formation and geologic changes and how earth systems influence these things and can kind of zero in on the driving question, you know, that anchoring phenomenon, like how does the Grand Canyon change over time? What is it exactly that's causing these changes over really long periods of time? Uh, she'll get the opportunity to read the magazine paper. Every single one of our units has at least one magazine paper, which is always really fun and kind of graphic and talks about. Uh, hmm? In the last unit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so like you said, you know, blending this sort of like this kind of component of like English and reading comprehension and, you know, like literacy with science. Uh, getting the opportunity to mend both of those things, which because they really, really rely on each other. Uh, in this paper, she'll kind of start to broaden her um, kind of perspective to like all sorts of different natural hazards. So like how did earthquakes change the Grand Canyon and what would happen if the Grand Canyon were to experience a flood? And then she can kind of start to think about how might these processes change other parts of the world? What happens when these changes happen super quickly, which will kind of lead into the engineering project, uh, learning about these natural hazards. Here, uh, one of the really main cross-cutting concepts is cause and effect, pretty self-explanatory, you know, what causes what, uh, you know, kind of just causation, linking these things with a certain process, which are, you know, Earth's processes and natural hazards, finding their effect on the land, but also finding their effect on uh, real communities of people. And that brings us into the, the engineering solutions project where before she really starts to dig in and do a model, she'll get the opportunity to research the natural hazards of uh, earthquakes and tsunamis in Japan specifically, uh, you know, as an island nation that's really susceptible to these specific hazards. Uh, she can kind of learn about uh, these events that have happened before and just a huge number of, uh, of casualties that these things have caused and kind of get to the question, like, you know, how can this kill so many people and what can we do to try to make sure that this sort of never really can happen again? She'll get the opportunity to research uh, what Japanese scientists and engineers now are doing to solve the problem. 
the different kind of ideas that have been proposed and then you know just like it's real world engineering so kind of learning that no there isn't one you know super clear correct answer you know every answer has pros everyone has cons as well kind of taking all of this evidence that she's gathered throughout the unit and applying it to this uh kind of like really pressing and like you know kind of humanitarian context you know how can i learn how can i use my knowledge of rocks and earth systems to help you know millions of people right so just learning about uh these issues in japan specifically you know of course if she wants to learn about other events that have happened elsewhere in the world very applicable to just these new different contexts uh we have another magazine paper about the, the solutions that have been proposed what's going on in japan now and then there's also an engineering design process sheet. So uh, just kind of provides that scaffolding for the steps that engineers kind of take throughout their design process, uh, you know, identifying a problem. What is it the problem that they want to solve? What is their hope? What are their limitations? Uh, what are their requirements? You know, we're thinking about things like materials and cost and like how feasible is it to locate and relocate an entire city? things like this. How can we rebuild a whole city? And then she'll get the opportunity to make a model, uh, which she can draw like a really cool detailed model, or if you want to collect materials, can even do a physical model to try to propose a solution and then, you know, kind of expose it to a modeled hazard to see how well it stands up. And then using those results to maybe think, what could I have done better about my model? Uh, you know, have I, you know, do I have new ideas about this? Do I think that, oh, actually, like, this didn't really work so well, and here's why I think it didn't, and here's right. a, a better solution, perhaps. So here, um, really, like, uh, in your role, maybe just providing the, the structure for learning about uh, Japan or any of these other contexts, if you want to find a uh, like online articles about natural hazards that are happening. And then, you know, just making sure that this uh, engineering design process goes uh, from step to step. Um, I know some students get really excited and just kind of jump in and say like, oh, here's my solution. Um, you know, just kind of taking it from the ground, making sure all of the, the steps are really cohesive and kind of use that logic to back up things with evidence like they've been practicing throughout the, throughout the unit. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the cross-cutting concepts in this unit before, like we saw. There's a ton of cause and effect, you know, really the whole thing is cause and effect. The why, the what is causing why and how, linking the cause and effect with the processes that shape the earth, whether they occur over really long periods of time or a tsunami that happens over the course of, you know, a few minutes. Um, we're talking about systems and modeling systems, whether the system is earth and we're talking about rain and tectonic plates and geology, or if we're talking about the system of, uh, you know, a tsunami resistant building and how it interacts with water in the built landscape around it. So again, cause and effect, we're talking about all these different processes that shape the Grand Canyon, shape other landforms on earth and just a ton of patterns, which is really fun because there's so much that she can really dig into about these uh, specific ideas. She'll be taking lots and lots of notes and looking for patterns and then trying to, you know, think of creative ways to frame those as evidence for a claim to help make an explanation. <clears throat> And then we talked about this a little bit earlier too, just the opportunity to integrate science with things like uh, language arts and reading, reading comprehension. She'll be reading multiple different uh, kind of scientific texts, looking for data there, writing explanations, you know, how, uh, how well can you really use logic to take these super scientific facts? We're talking about numbers and periods in, you know, millions of years ago, really kind of hard numerical data and find a, finding a way to express it, you know, in a way that's really clear and approachable and really makes sense. Um, is there a print version of the magazine available or is it just the kind of the online version? 
Uh, yeah, it's mostly just hosted digitally. So it's like embedded in the lesson. We also offer a PDF version of it. Okay. It's in full color. You're welcome to print it. It might use a lot of ink. Uh, don't worry too much about that. I just think sometimes it's nice to hold a physical copy of something and, you know, magazines are always fun. It's bringing back weekly reader memories for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I appreciate that for sure. And then you also get the opportunity to, with like a paper magazine, to grab your highlighter, grab your pen, circle. Right, and you know. make notes and yes. Mm -hmm. Working up the page. Yeah, so the PDF version of the paper will be in that Google Drive folder. Of okay, all of yeah, we didn't print it last time, but I think this time I will print them out probably and you know, okay. make, make little magazines. <laughs> That's cool. I like it. It is a magazine. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering for the classroom teachers, if that was ever going to be an option to, you know, get a classroom set or something of the magazines, even if it was like one bigger volume with all of them for the units for the year or something like, it just seems like a neat thing to have. But... That would be really cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Let's print it. <laughs> let's publish this. <laughs> Um, so in addition to the magazines, you know, just gathering evidence from all sorts of sources, whether it's already written out in English or whether it's numbers in a data table using this evidence and then finding a way to, um, really make sense of it. And then, uh, you know, reaching consensus on these scientific ideas, you know, she'll find with the, um, with the thing in Japan, you know, everyone has different ideas on what's good, what's bad, you know, trying to find the merit and maybe the drawbacks in any given solution that's proposed. And uh, that's it for the presentation. Let me know, of course, okay. if you have any other thoughts or questions, we're always here to, to help.